Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Alicia and I am here to make people aware of heart failure, cardiomyopathy, and a thing called the ALA, which I have. Um, I've been on a 19 year journey to surviving heart failure. I'm a survivor. Um, it started off when I was 22. Um, I ended up getting sick after I had my second child. She was a month old and um, made multiple trips to the hospital. You know, being young, I, I didn't know better, but I know better now that I should have, uh, when, when the hospital that I was going through didn't take me seriously, I should have, you know, seeked out care elsewhere. But you know, you go to the doctor and you think that they know what's best for you and what's going on with you, but they don't. You have to advocate for yourself. And if you feel like something's not right, then you get a second opinion. That's what I tell any of the women that um, that's going through this now, because I've been through it. I tell them, if you feel like something is not right, get a second op opinion because, you know, doctors are so quick to write us off, you know, write it off as being um, post-pregnancy symptoms, pregnancy symptoms when it's not. It's, it's actually the beginning of something going terribly wrong. So um, I ended up with cardiomyopathy. At that time, I stayed in the hospital for, for about a week. They let me go home on an ass of medication. And... Um, so, you know, they really didn't explain things to me like they should have. You know, I'm at home, depressed, thinking, hey, when am I going to die? You know, this is a death sentence, which is not, because there are women that recover from cardiomyopathy, um, heart failure related to pregnancy. Um, it, it After... Uh, they put me on my medication and everything. It seems like I, I got a little better. I reached 45% with the, with my ejection fraction, which is the, the strength at which your heart pushes out blood. Um, I got to 45% and slowly declined over the years. Then I got to 45% like um, maybe 2010. And then 2012, I had declined to 30% which is when I had to have my ICD, which is a defibrillator implanted in my chest here to keep my um, rhythm correct, to keep me from going into atrial fibrillation. Fibrillation, sorry. <laughs> but, um, so things went okay after 2012, but by the time 2015 came, I had slipped on down to 16%. My doctor never mentioned putting me on a heart transplant list. Um, never mentioned, I, I, I knew an L that existed from a Grey's Anatomy episode, but he never mentioned it to me, so I'm, I'm guessing he was just going to let me, you know, get worse and worse and worse and, and just pass away, you know. And I sit and I think, how many women has he done this to or how many people for that matter because if you look like you can't afford that kind of care or you look like you don't have insurance they will not hesitate to let you die and basically my doctor was just um changing me from medication to medication to medication without doing any tests or workups to see if I was a candidate for heart failure, I mean, for um, transplant. I probably was a candidate in 2015, and he never had it done, and I could probably have a heart by now. But, um, you know, I look at it like this. Um, things happen when they're supposed to happen. So maybe this is the way it was supposed to go. I'm not mad. I cannot hold a grudge because grudges only cause stress and I'm not going to do it. So I try to live my life now day to day, stress free, not worrying about anything, trying to attract positivity, positivity to me, you know, because I need all the positivity I can get. Um, so, last year in April, I had to have 
this is this scar I had to have open heart surgery um, to have a mechanical pump attached to my heart it's about the size of my hand and um it's metal some kind of metal and they open your chest up and they cut a hole in your heart and the left ventricle and they attach it to your heart with like sutures and all of that and um there's a cord that comes from it that um comes out my side right here um so it goes underneath my skin and it comes out my side and i have to clean this um every three days and change the bandage on it my daughter used to do it for me but i do it myself now um because you know i don't want to feel like a burden which i know i'm not but you know i want my independence back mainly so um i have to go and see my heart failure team um once a month i'm on another ass of medication when i first got out of the hospital uh, I was in the hospital for two months, two weeks when I got the LVAD. Um, I was on 30 pills when I got out. And I'm down to, I think, like 19 now, so that's something good. But I know that this is not a cure. I mean, there are people that live, you know, are there's two categories of people. There are the bridge to transplant, transplant people, which are the people that have the LVAD until they can find a heart for them which you have to go through extensive like testing to see if you are a candidate for a uh, transplant, which I am, um, and I'm on the list now, status 1B, so I'm just waiting. Because my heart, blood, um, blood type is O positive, it's gonna take a little longer, but as long as I'm stable on this, I'm fine with it. And then there's the people that are destination therapy, which are people that are older or that has high antibodies, um, rejection antibodies that you know, wouldn't be a good candidate for a heart transplant because chances are their body will reject it or people with cancer or any other type of illness that would prevent them from being a good candidate. But I have to carry this bag with me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, everywhere I go, in the bed, in the shower, everywhere. This is my best friend. He goes with me. His name is Percy. <laughs> He goes with me everywhere I go. I mean, I turn over in the bed, he turn over. He like he cuddles me from, he spoons me from the back. <laughs> but what's in his bag is um, this is the computer that controls the pump in my heart. I have two of these. This is this is my main one, and then I have a backup one just in case this one goes out when you have to change it. And these two things are the batteries. Um, it comes with six batteries. This is a half a million dollar piece of equipment. So basically I'm buying it one. I run off batteries. I don't have blood pressure, don't have a pulse. Um technically I'm dead, but I'm not. Because it's a continuous pump, so it just continuously flow keeps the blood flowing around my heart and my body. Um because I was really, really, really sick when I went to the hospital. I had lost so much weight I was so thin and I actually looked like I was about to die because I was. And, um, you know, I think back to my family seeing me go through all that and it just breaks my heart just to think about them, you know, not even me going through it. I knew that I could make it, but just them seeing me like that was hard. But anyway, so I have to carry this with me everywhere I go. Um, I've really gotten used to it now. It's like an extension of me. Um, when I first went into the hospital, I had to have Mirinol, which was similar to this. It was an IV that I had to carry with me everywhere. Um, it went, I had an IV in my arm right here that went directly into my heart that pumped the medication directly into my heart muscle to help it to beat better. So... I changed that bag. Well, at one time I had both bags. And about a month, two months after I had the surgery for the LVAD, they took my other bag because my right, the right side of my heart was doing better. So now I only have this bag, Percy. 
Um, like I said, he's my best friend. He keeps me alive. You know, I don't have any problems with my OVAD. Um, some people do, but I have not. I haven't had to be, um, I had to be hospitalized one time because I was dehydrated. But other than that, in a year, I haven't had any more issues. Just a lot of weight gain, which I gotta get off. Um, when you're a heart failure patient, an advanced heart failure patient, they put you on a diet. Um, no more than 2,000 milligrams of sodium, no more than eight cups of water, no more than 1,800 calories, which is very, very rare. It was very, very, very hard when I first started because I was so used to eating whenever I wanted. And um, especially the salt. You don't know how salty something is until you have to stop eating salt. So about after the first three weeks, you know, the first three weeks were hard. It was nasty. It was disgusting. It was tasteless. You know, I just had to get my groove into making stuff taste like how I wanted. Um, after those first three weeks, I was kind of okay. And, and I learned how to season without salt, which is not that hard. Um, more people need to do it because heart disease is rampant among black people. You know, and I never want to see anybody go through what I'm going through. Um, especially if it can be avoided. Salt is the devil. It is salt and sugar. Anything white is the devil. Like white bread, white sugar, white flour, salt, anything. That means that means that the product has been bleached. Anything white has been bleached to be salt. And which takes out all of the nutrition that you really need. Um, white rice, all of it. So if you can just cut down on that, you will. Your body will thank you. Eat more vegetables and fruits. So what I did was went to the store and got an ass of um, herbs and spices, garlic powder onion powder, parsley, paprika, chili powder, curry, cumin, oregano, thyme, every, everything. Um, and now everything that I cook is salt free. I might salt bay my food a little bit, but um, basically all of it is salt free. Um, it's all about flavor. You know, and that's what I look for. Um, it was disgusting, like I said, and, and I found a way to make it taste good. Uh, garlic, butter. Um, so, really, I made this channel to just help people to eat right, especially people in my predicament or if you look like you're going that way. Because I don't see any channels of women saying anything about heart failure, peripotent heart failure, cardiomyopathy, LVAD, ICD, none of it. So I just want to make people aware that this is happening. I mean, there I'm, on, I'm, I'm a member of a group on Facebook called Peripartum Cardiomyopathy. My postpartum cardiomyopathy, and there are so many women in there that are, that are going through this. Um, and it's like it's it's a big issue. Like doctors will write off your symptoms as symptoms of pregnancy, or you know, post-pregnancy symptoms when it's not. I mean, you know your body better than anyone. And if, if, if a patient comes to you and say, hey, look, Doc, something's wrong, take them seriously. Because it, it literally means it's the difference between life and death. So um, on this channel, I'm going to be cooking um, low sodium food to show you that, hey, it can be done. You know, it won't be salty, um, it's good for you good for your heart, good for your blood pressure, good for your kidneys, good for everything. So today I'm going to be making, um, I occasionally fry because I like fried food, but there still won't be any salt in it. 
Um, so today I'm making you fried boneless skinless thighs and um, some um, sweet potato, diced sweet potatoes, baked, and maybe like some broccoli. I actually watch it with the broccoli because it's high in vitamin K. Things like collard greens, cabbages, anything that's green, I have to watch because I'm on a blood thinner and um, vitamin K thickens your blood, which could cause a clot in my pump, which could lead to a stroke or a pump failure. Um, if that were to happen, they would have to go into me again and switch out my pump. Um, I have to keep my INR, which is um, the thickness of your blood, to keep it between two, 2.5 and 3, which I have successfully, if it dips a little bit, the lower it is, the thicker your blood, um, they will tell me to you know, double up on your blood thinner, or if it's too thin, they'll say, let's skip your blood thinner today, or say half of blood thinner today. So, I mean, it's okay. Like I said, I, ha I haven't had any issues, but yeah, it is what it is. Just, just have to deal with it. So what I'm going to do now is take my sweet potatoes and wash them off. I've already washed my chicken. Yes, I washed my chicken. I don't care what none of y'all think or say. I wash my chicken. I don't wash it and swing stuff everywhere. Um... I guess that's what the concern is of washing your chicken. But what if your piece of chicken was dropped on the ground or, you know, something like that? I mean, I don't want that on my chicken. So I wash my chicken. Period. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's all good. It's your choice. Your food. I've done it all since I've been cooking. And nothing's ever happened. My kids have never had any sick I've never been sick whatever but I wash mine so I just washed my sweet potatoes so now wait get my camera right okay So there's my washed chicken. <laughs> um, there's my washed all the skillet stocks. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my parsley, my garlic powder, my onion powder, my chili powder. I usually use Miss Dad's table blend as well, but um, I don't have any. So we're gonna make it work. Um, I'm gonna do lemon pepper. The lemon pepper actually has salt in it. It's uh, 180 milligrams. So I'm not usually if I don't use lemon pepper, I will put some of this um, Lowry's garlic salt, which is 25% less sodium. It is one fourth teaspoon has. I think it's like 140 milligrams. It is calories. Yeah, 180 milligram or a fourth of a teaspoon, which I usually don't, you know, sprinkle but a little bit. Um, just to give it a taste of salt. So, okay. I think it's right down here. But what I'm going to do is sprinkle the chiller. It's all about seasoning and taste. I just sprinkle on like that. Sprinkle on some onion powder, like so. I'm going to go ahead and cut my stove on to medium high and let my <clears throat> what you call it um, grease 
heat up garlic powder, of course, of course. And parsley. I use um, all-purpose flour because it has no salt. Self-rising flour days. Oh, got me one pepper. Whoa. Okay. So, yes, people, you season both sides of the meat, not just one. I mean, who wants a piece of chicken where one side is seasoned and the other's not? Wash them hands off and repeat. Uh, repeat. Mm. Um, what I'm going to do is my garlic powder. What I'm going to do is put a little mustard in a bowl. Um, I found um, uh, the member of a group called all of these groups and stuff that I'm, I'm mentioning. I will put it in the description box. But I'm a member of a group called um, Soul Food Cooking. <laughs> It's a crazy group. Um, they roast people in there. I like it because life is not to be taken so seriously all the time. And um, if you bring your food on there looking a hot mess, then you are going to be roasted. So don't do it. But um, it's just so funny. Like I've never been roasted, so I guess my food looks okay. But I. I have seen a lot of people on there that have. I mean, you know when your food don't look good before you even put it on there. So, you know. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do. Oh, I was talking about mustard. I'm going to have this mustard. Just regular old mustard. And put it in a bowl. And I'm going to add a little water to it. This is going to help my better stick better. <laughs> help my better stick better. Not too thick, not too thin. Because I don't, I, um, people, I like mine crispy, but I don't like it super duper crispy because it, it tastes kind of greasy then. So, mustard, my mustard has <clears throat> 60 milligrams. There's about four tables, teaspoons of mustard. Um, a time for three twenty, but that's not gonna be per serving. So this is what it looks like um, after I've added the water and everything. So I'm gonna set this to the side. Get my seasonings out of the way. So, I'm going to get another bowl. Put my flour in it. I see a lot of people that I like to touch. But, you know, I'm cooking. I cook with love. Absolute love. I love cooking. I love cooking for my family. You know, family. Cooking brings families together. And I love anytime I can, I will cook for my family because I love them and they are my world. I mean, that's how I show my love cooking. So while my um, grease is getting hot, because you want it hot. Oh. While my grease is in the I'm going to get my knife out to cut up my um, sweet potato pieces. I'm going to put some brown sugar on them. 
I get my pan. And I'm going to put a piece of aluminum foil in it. So I won't have to wash a whole bunch of pieces later. I'm going to set this to the side so y'all can see what I'm doing. Um, so I got my pan with some aluminum foil in it. So I won't have to, you know. So, sweet potatoes. Um, so what I do, I don't like them too big and I don't like them too small. So, so I just cut them like twice. And then twice this way. Actually, I've read that sweet potato, the potato skin of the potato is the best part. So I eat it. If you don't have to eat it, if you don't want to, I eat it. I eat them on red potatoes, any kind of potato, rusted potatoes. When I make my potato salad, I leave the skins on. Yep, I do. Because I like it. I need to struggle in my life. Little tip. Okay. Anyway. So, like. Just dice them in the cubes, chunk them over in there. I'm gonna drizzle some oil over them. I'm not gonna put the brown sugar on until um, they cook some, because it'll burn them. I think I don't like I don't like to put it on there. Yeah, so I will in a little bit after they cook a little bit. So okay, those are there are potatoes. It's not two people eating, so that's good. Um. So I'm going to just drizzle. Actually, I'm going to get some oil out of my pan here. Drizzle the oil on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cinnamon on them. Some nutmeg. Okay. And I'm going to put them in the oven on 350, which is the universal temp <laughs> for everything. In this house, so hold on a second. Let me clean up these. And we will start with our chicken. When I cook, I like to have a little music in the background. Sometimes I might break out into a song. I love this song, Tear Taylor. So, what I do for my oil to, to find out if it's hot is I 
get some of my and I sprinkle it in there. And when it starts frying good, that means it's ready. Or you can get a wooden spoon and do it. Um, it lets you know whether it's good. So what I'm going to do though is go ahead and dip my chicken into my mustard. And I'm going to let the rest of it just drain off like that and then into the flour. Um, just a second. Let's do a little skill. Oh, yes, I'm trying to start on the spin. So, just going to do the chicken like that. And I'm going to sit it back here. Get the rest of it out. Be careful not to sling it everywhere. Um, put it in there. So you see how, I don't know if you can see it, but my um, oil is like moving. That means it's ready. So this piece that I already did, I'm going to put it in the flour again. It's going to make a beautiful crust. So, bam, into the, put it open again. Do not crowd the chicken. So, you I know mean, you do like three pieces at a time. Don't be careful with that mustard. The mustard basically just holds the flour on. I know some people use um, buttermilk for everything stuff fried. You know, I made buttermilk fried chicken before and it was kind of like greasy to me. And then plus buttermilk has um, salt in it, so I don't use it anymore. I use the mustard because it's very low in salt. Damn, very tasty. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't like to take, you know, Put their hands in the flour. I want to touch. I like to touch my food. And I I want my family to know I touch my I put my positive energy into the food. I transfer my energy into the school when I cook. You know, I'm putting positivity and love into this chicken. You know, so I don't care about having flour on my hands. I really don't. Because it's, it's cooked with love. And that's all that matters to me. Because that my, my food is cooked with love. And, and it's giving my, you know, my family nutritious meal. So we're going to let that cook. Um, in the meantime, I'll be right back. I need to get a few minutes back to rest my food. So, so in this pack, it was twelve bones for five for seven dollars. So this is two meals, two meals, you know, or one meal for a family of people. But I'm always looking for me and my daughter. So it's two of us. Six pieces should take some of her tomorrow. So. Um, these other six pieces, I'm just gonna throw them in the freezer. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll make a salad tomorrow or something, and I'll pop out a couple of them and um, saute them and, and make me a huge, pretty salad. <laughs> um, so, our chicken is cooking. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Um, chicken is cooking. Well, this is going on. My doctor said that I can have like a cup of wine. So this is what I do. I just have a little small, small cup. 
of wine. Um, here and there. So we're just gonna let this chicken cook. Broccoli. I really don't want want broccoli because it'll fit my stomach. Um. I don't want rice. I think the color of my rice is the Maybe I'll do a little small salad. You know, I haven't had a salad in a few days. Um, what I put in my salad is. I'm putting red pepper, bell pepper, green bell pepper, red bell pepper, um, onion, coupon, I put butter, and um, cucumber, and this person that I found that I can actually eat. I don't like vinaigrette, but I love these vinaigrettes. And I, I'm not a vinaigrette person, but I love these vinaigrettes. I'm going to get this here. I need more counter space. <clears throat> so I'm going to get my tongs. And put my chicken. It doesn't take um all the skin size that long to cook because it'll have the bone in them for about 10 minutes and they're ready. I like my chicken to be not dark but brown. I don't like nobody's white chicken. White skin chicken. <laughs> I gotta tell my daughter. Everything in my life that I eat, I like it black. No, we're not black, but dark. Like I like my men. I love black men. I love them. The darker the better. You know, the darker the better. Than it's beautiful. But I'm going to get um, something to take my chicken out on. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put it in I like to drain my chicken on a wild rack because when you put it off in the towel, you can fold the meat. So I need my wild rack. I keep the I keep the cast iron. Cast iron, my favorite. Hands over there. Cast iron. Gotta have the cast iron. Because it cooks so well. I cook cornbread. Everything. And cast iron. Love it. I just smell those. Um, I know some people put cornstarch in their flour to make their chicken crispy, but I haven't tried it. Maybe I will one day. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back over here and batter the rest of this chicken and lay it back on the plate. Uh, 
so that you can get a good crisp, crisp on it. It's a uh, weather. I don't know, when I go from hot to cold, like, ow, if I come from outside in the heat to in the house, in the cool, my nose is excellent. Damn food. Like, it starts to run, like, like I have allergies, but I don't. It doesn't even do it all the time. Just when I go from hot to cold, like, change the temperature. Um, in the room, I just squeeze me up when I, you know, my nose. I don't know. It's so before I put these pieces in the grease, I'm going to batter them again. Not, not again. Oh, why y'all let me do that? I need to put that in the mustard. Why y'all let me do that? I don't know. Y'all don't care about me. I see that now. And that one I'm not gonna double double um do that one since I went back after the flower. So I'm just gonna those I'm just gonna put in there about dipping and put a flower again. Okay. This is concoction of something um, I have so many recipes. Um, the other day I made some casserole, broccoli, rice, chicken and cheese, I made my own, um, yeah, that is perfect. I made my own, um, so to call for cream of mushroom, I put cream of mushroom in mine. Some, some people put cream of chicken, but I made my own cream of mushroom and it was absolutely good. I put, um, I used, uh, baby bell mushroom and I put green and red bell peppers in mine. I put onions in it. I put cream. I put some butter. I put some garlic. I mean, that with some crackers could get a meal in it, in, it, in itself. But there's my kids feel like to eat stuff with chocolate and salt in it. So with theirs, I made it with a regular cream mushroom like a can. But mine, I made it with um, my homemade cream mushroom, and I also make my own chicken stock. So I had some chicken stock in it. So I used chicken um, stock that I had made the day before for um, some purpose. It was something. Um, I don't know what it was for, but um. I made some chicken stock the day before. And I made some like pork stock. I made a, a dang um, full pork for and I kept that stock. So I had pork stock, chicken stock. And um it was so good. Like, the chicken stock in. I mean, I was a little on the store, okay, you know, there was nothing on the store. But because I put the evening in my own store, then it's just so good. Um, so my cream of mushroom came out really well. Mine, my daughter told me that mine broccoli rice casserole tastes better than theirs, and she was jealous. <laughs> So she was like, next time we can make it, because I, I can't use as much cheese on mine, because cheddar is high in uh, sodium. So, um, I can't put as much 
cheese on mine, so I put red cheese in the stock to set it off. She was like, this time, this next hour, just like the original cake. It actually tastes better. So that's what I'm going to do next time. Instead of, you know, doing two separate things, which took me, it would take me double the time, but, you know, like I was telling you about the rice and the white um, ingredients, I absolutely hate brown rice. I prefer white rice, but I really don't like white rice, so I'd rather not have any rice than to be brown. I absolutely hate it, hate it, hate it for the passion. So, Yeah, I eat it. My fish cook rice, and they're like, no, 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 no pneumonia, no neck. Like neck. Never I had my I didn't call you if I when I had my first dog, I had a little bit of cloud slight star. My so bad you guys are placing which is the leaky valve in my heart. And maybe I don't know if that has something to do with what happened to my heart. For my second child, but you know, who knows? But um, I mean, I was not sick at all. I was, uh, I was totally healthy. The white weight, you know, it was so happy. This happened. I mean, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. So, it's a reason. What it is, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, I'm trying to find out. I just live my life the best I can and I doubt. You know? Because you're for a child. I doubt. And that's what I do. So, I'm so positive. Look at me from the positive angle. And a doubt. We have to adapt. We have to learn and adapt. And that's what I do. A lot of my friends and family and stuff ask me, you know, what you're going through all this, how do you stay so positive? And I tell them, because that's all I can do. All I can do is stay positive and um, manifest positive into my life because no one else can. I mean, no one else can, you know, has control over this life but me. So, I just stay as positive as I can and, and, and welcome over my heart to all the positive that I can. So, I'm going to make me a little salad. I love everything on my salad. Um, pepper, onion, I guess that's probably it. Sometimes I put grapes. Oh, that salad just now I was telling y'all about? This is it. Uh oh, this is so delicious. And I don't even like vinaigrette, but I love this. It's called um, Sydney's Kitchen Barcelona Vinaigrette. I love it. It, it tastes like, um, my daughter says it tastes like um, garlic bread, which it does. 
smells like beet kind of though, but I like it. I don't like vinaigrette. Sometimes I'll make my own vinaigrette. I mean, um, Italian dressing. Oh, that's pretty good. This has kind of changed my mind about vinaigrette. So, I just put a few things on and some tomatoes. Oh, yes, I need to just buy this tomato. Look, look. So, um, here. I'm going to cut my onion. I like my onion cut very thin. Like that. Tomato. I like to just cut a piece and um, cut it like vertically and then horizontally. So I like mine diced. And I use this romaine lettuce that's already washed and cut and everything. So I leave the last few pieces I just take all of them. You know what I should have did? I should have took my own sweet potatoes and wrapped them in some aluminum foil. It took less time to cook. This all is going to be so good. Add my onions. I'm going to spin my stove down a little bit. Add my tomatoes. Oh, I forgot I got the cucumbers. And strawberries. So, that's why it's not cooking the way. I really don't like cucumbers, but I made myself one because I need. It's, it's healthy. Not my way having to say it. I think it was the refrigerator was too. Um, like with my um cucumbers, I like to eat the the skin as well because of course that's where all the nutrition is. I don't really like a whole bunch of cucumbers. I like cucumbers. Sometimes I'll eat them with um, ranch and chicken. Just cucumbers and ranch, like celery. Um, those cherry tomatoes I will too. But as far as these eating cucumbers, nah, that's not my thing. So, gotta cut up a few strawberries. Maybe 
put them in like forks. I wish I had some grapes. So, there's my salad. I'm gonna get two pounds. Yes. I'm turn off my video down. I see a lot of people um, I never do it in my life. Like, I think I did it in my roast last time I cooked. But, um, when you cook for a long time, you don't want to take too much over there. You know when it's done. I mean, you know. I had from the spaghetti yesterday. So I'm gonna put all these back in the right there. Um get my fruits on. Sushi restaurant is Roussan's up in Athens. But I mean, Roussan's is great. Um, but when I can't get to Roussan's, I eat that. It's not all that it's cracked up to be. It's like pre made. I mean, I guess for pre made, it's pretty good. But I really, I rather have. Mm -hmm. So I know my sweet potatoes are not done. I know it. Oh, they're looking. Looking scrunches. Check them out. I mean, y'all know they're not done. And get some dark brown sugar. A small bowl. Get this some butter. Since I didn't use really no salt on anything I just cooked. The chicken doesn't have that much um, salt in it. So I'm going to take a piece of butter and cut it up and put it over my um, they're actually Almost done. And I'm going to get a bowl. And put a little bit of. Mm. 
uh, brown sugar in it. And I'm going to add a little water to it. And stir it up. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't nothing to write home about. It's, it's tuna in it, and those little crunchy things on top. Yum yum sauce. It's alright. So, I'm going to show y'all something that I do. I, I don't drink sodas. I don't drink, um... I don't drink sodas at all. I try to drink mostly water. I like lemonade, anything fruity. So I found this tea. It's a Turkey Hill Diet Blackberry flavored sweet tea. It is so good. What I do is I take the um, Mini Maid Just 15 um, lemonade and I mix it with this. Like the majority of this, but I mix the. Um, just 15 lemonade with it, so it's like blackberry lemonade tea, and it is so good. And it costs like a dollar ninety-eight in Ingles. So, or I'll get Milo's low calorie um, tea and mix that just 15 lemonade in it, and um, it's great as well. Like. Whenever I buy the um, Milo's tea, I always buy the just for tea and I'll mix them together. And that's my favorite drink. I don't drink sodas. Because they're bad on your kidneys. You know? Party failure is already bad on your kidneys. So. I don't need it. Anything else messing with my kids? So, I mean, the journey has been hard. It's been difficult, I have to admit. But I'm a survivor. I know I am. I've survived this long. 39 years. My dad died of a massive heart attack when I was 17 years old in front of my mom and I and you know I knew I'm gonna set this on the table. Um so heart disease runs in my on my dad's side of the family so I knew, you know, when my dad had ended up with coronary artery disease that one of us was gonna end up with it and I look so much like my dad. I mean exactly like my dad. And um, so I knew one of us was going to end up with it. And I kind of knew at a young age 
when all this started happening that it was going to be me and it was i don't know if i brought that to myself i like to think that i didn't but it's okay like i said things happen for a reason and who knows but this is my chicken done finished product beautiful um perfect color mm. crispy crispy this is right now a little tinge of salt so right now I'm just waiting on this and um, the potato to thicken up a little bit and then I will eat So what I'm going to do, So I'm gonna sit this over on the table. See how my you can't see <laughs> my brown sugar mixture is kind of thickening up and coating my potatoes. Just taste one. Perfect. So I'm going to put some potatoes on a plate. This is my. So, this is my healthy meal for today. It is um, brown sugar, sweet potatoes, uh, fried boneless, skinless chicken thigh, um, low sodium, low sodium, low sodium. Low sodium is the game. My salad with croutons which you have 50 milligrams of salt bell peppers red pepper red bell peppers strawberries tomatoes easily under 50 milligrams of salt so for this whole meal here it's probably less than 200 milligrams of sodium dead ass two less than 200 milligrams of sodium and then I have my tea which has zero, like 10 milligrams of sodium, I think so. Less than 200 milligrams of sodium. 
Um, so, I like to say thank you to the people who tuned in. This is my very first um, video. It'll get better. I mean, shit don't come. It'll get better. But as for now, oops. Like I said, this is the very. Anyway, this is my very first video. I'm just trying to bring awareness to people that suffer from heart failure, um, whether it's from pregnancy, viral, you know, <clears throat> in LVAD life. I'm a heart hashtag. LVAD survivor, hashtag CHF survivor, hashtag survivor. I am a survivor. And anyone out there that's going through what I'm going through, I want to say you have my prayers. You have my energy. I send this to you to help you get through it and survive like I have. Um, it's a hard road, but it can be, it can be tough. Um, my prayers to you and everyone out there, heart failure or not, um, live each day like it's your last. Live love and, and hug and kiss and snuggle on your, your family and your friends and talk to y'all next time.